Um, this is a dream um, interview for me. I'm really, really happy to do this and excited to do this. And we always wanted to do this. And we were supposed to do this as a seminar in real life with um, us, the four of us actually being on stage together. Um, but we can only do it in video because of COVID. But I'm delighted to have three people that I admire. And I can't say that I admire tons of people in this business, but there's lots that I do. These are three special people. And I'd like to introduce them. The first gentleman on my screen, or, uh, you're seeing this on my screen, is Mauricio Baldi. Mauricio and I worked together in um, Legler for a long time. And then Mauricio did an amazing job at Arvind, which is a great company, and now works for Diamond Denim in Pakistan. Hamid Yanichi is um, famous from working in ISCO for, I don't know, 20 something years, and then did an amazing job at Chalik, and now has his own independent consultancy firm, and Bart Van Voestin, who I have the good fortune, amazing fortune to work with at Prosperity. And I met Bart many years ago in Hong Kong. We had dinner together and I always thought, oh, I hope I have a chance to work with him one day. Anyway, so these are the three gentlemen that are here. They all create denim fabrics. And what I think is really important is that our whole Kingpin show or any show of denim can't exist without beautiful fabrics. And you can't have beautiful fabrics unless you have people like, like this creating them and suggesting to designers. I mean, designers can design styles, but at the end of the day, they can't do anything with a beautiful fabric. So I consider these people as the, um, how can I say, the Karl Lagerfelds of the denim world. So having said that, um, enough promotion. <laughs> I have questions and I got, I got a few questions. And if you guys could all be brief with your questions, I'd appreciate it. Everybody can, um, see this whole thing in 15 or 20 minutes. Thank you. The first question is, and we'll go in order of the screen, which is Maurizio, Hamid, and Bart. Um, where does your inspiration come from each season when you make a fabric collection? Well, the, we have inspiration from three different sources. I think that uh, one of the main sources is uh, uh, trips that uh, we do every season. So we visit uh, Tokyo usually, uh, New York, uh, London, Amsterdam, where we can go through uh, shops and also vintage shops. Um, another source of um, inspiration for me is to visit exhibitions and museums, not only related to Textile, but uh, to art uh, in general. Emmett? The, the inspiration, I agree with you, Maurizio, for sure, to visiting different places in the world and having some more information about the past, uh, digging the books of the vintage and so on. But my real inspiration is coming from the, the real fabric needs because. We're all evolving and we are and changing our needs and everything. Even in these days, our expectations from our clothing is are different than many other times. So that's why I think the biggest inspiration for me is the, the people's needs, where they comfort, how they, they want to feel or how they feel really comfortable in their, in their clothing. So this is very important. So, my biggest inspiration, I would say, this is definitely the, the people's uh, confidence and people's mind, what they really want, what they really expect from their, their genes. And the other thing, and it's very important, the, the developments in the other industries also is a good inspiration source. Because in, even in textile, rather than textile, in, in electronics or in, in textile, different than the denim sector, they're making a lot of new developments and adopting such developments to, to the denim is another big source for me for the inspiration. Thank you. Bert? Well, it, it, it's true also for me that uh, most of the inspiration comes from, from the consumer, what the consumer wants. Uh, we cannot deny, you know, if, if they uh, are dressed in a certain way, uh, we need to, to give them, you know, what, what they need. And if it's high stretch, then it's high stretch. If it's a little bit more vintage inspired, then you know, we, we might look at the past for inspiration, but it's, it's always, I think, the consumer that, that will drive uh, that uh, inspiration for us. Okay. Um, how big does a collection have to be? 
I mean, we all make a really huge collection. If, if, if you look at kingpins, we have, I don't know how many, if we, if we have 60 mills in kingpins and every mill has, a, I don't know, 80 fabrics. We have 4,800 fabrics. How many do you, do you think we all need every season and how many should mills actually make? Because it's, it's a huge cost to make all those samples. Well, uh, the answer comes from the experience uh, that we have uh, when we are in front of our customer. In uh, Norma, in uh, one of our collections, diamond collection, we have uh, 60, 70 fabrics, but actually we show maximum 30 to 40 to the, to the customer. We don't have uh, time to, sh to show more fabrics. And we focus usually on 10, 15. Okay. Actually, this is much uh, evolved. It, and in the past, it was much easier, much less number of fabrics because, and because there were big denim hats and the number of big denim hats were buying most of the denim in the world. And therefore, we had less client. And the time has changed. Individualism started and everyone wants to be unique. Even some of the retailers, and if they have different departments, more than one department, they usually want to be different than each other. So this pushed us a lot to make a differentiated collection and to make it a more and more fabrics in the collection. For me, is a, a, if you are providing the fabric for all around the world, like you said, is the 80 fabrics is the maximum because more than 80 fabrics, we lose the concentration of the customers during the presentation. It's very difficult to make them understand and to get every detail of our customers. Uh, but what I think, instead of the, the number of the articles, if you have a three or four really strong new concept in the collection, it's much more important than having more numbers of the fabrics. Because if you can really show something differentiated from each other, different than each other, and it has some newness inside, it's definitely three or four new concepts is enough. But under this three, four new concepts, if you can uh, support with this one, and especially for each kind of test, like a, I call it, this is something like the satellites of the concepts. So some fabrics for, for the women, some fabric for the men's, some fabrics for the really the youngers, or some fabrics for the, the, the older ages. If you can adapt the collection according to this, this is enough. So three, four new concepts, new idea presenting, I think it's enough for the making the good presentation. But maximum 80 fabrics, I think is enough, more than enough to hold them in with their attention. Thank you. You know, also for us, it's not a it's not a fixed number of developments. You know, I would say on average, it's forty to sixty new fabrics uh, each uh, season. Uh, of course, you know we we work you know, with with Europe and and with the US and then with the domestic uh, Asian markets. So the needs for in each market is, is slightly different. So that's why that number is you know it's between forty and sixty, could maybe be seventy. But I would say. Um, I agree that, you know, uh, with too many fabrics, you start losing focus. So it, it's more about uh, certain concepts and, and, and you know, uh, filling those buckets and, and having enough uh, fabrics in those concepts. And again, typically that would be uh, between uh, 40 and 60 in our case. Is this going to change after this, this virus when we go back for the next season? For instance, when we show, assuming we, we're all going to try to show in October and assume we will. Um, will the Sorry, Andrew. No, go ahead, Maurice. For sure, this season, autumn, winter 21, 22, it will be new, different, and uh, odd. Um, we are expecting uh, to be able in some market to show the, directly to the customer as normally. But uh, for a lot of customers, we will force to send the the collection and it will be important what Amit said. We need very clear message. What they receive, the package that they receive, it, will, it must be extremely clear for them. And uh, for this reason, the collection, it, will be, it must be very small. Hammett? Maybe 25. Hammett? Yes, and also 
uh, actually, it, this will affect all of us, like we do now. And we are, instead of coming together all together, and, and we're just making, recording everything with the video, video conferencing. Actually, that's why what I think this, the new future, it will not be the same as before, because, and especially for this season, I think it's very difficult to, to present the collections when, while we are making at the old times. We are not able to give them the same feelings and we are not asking to make them uh, present and make them touch. Instead of this, probably uh, from a distance to make a presentation, more visual effects, obvious visual effects would be really important. And other telling, other thing is the, maybe we have to have a very good storytelling stories, concepts. If we can convince the customers with the good stories and with the convincing their customers, even with the online, because convincing the customers online way is very important because uh, this is the biggest, biggest uh, one of the biggest key for the future because how can you keep the, the online customers' uh, attention in a very quick time? And I think if you if they can produce and present such a way where the good storytelling will be much more important than to show and try to ask them to touch the fabric. All right, what do you think the collection will look like in October? Well, you know, we were on track on, on having another 40 to 60 fabrics, but, but I agree, of course, if you cannot, you know, work with a customer one-on-one -on -one and really show the products and, and uh, then, you know, um, it will be very difficult. You can't show um, 40 to 60 fabrics like, you know, online, you know, some customers have been asking us to make pictures. And I agree that, you know, you could only present your strongest concept, you know, something that's really special. Either because of color, because of construction, something that really speaks, you know, through a picture or an online presentation. So we might have to cut it down, you know, to to half of what we used to do, and really uh, only present the the, the strongest uh, concepts. All right, last question, and please give it to me as briefly as you can. What is the most exciting thing going on right now in denim? What what is for men and what for women? What would it, would it be? Let's start with Bart. So we change the order just for this distance. Yeah. Well, you know, what, what's, you know, you were asking before is are we driven, you know, uh, inspirationally by the past or by the future? I, I think now what we're definitely seeing is that there is a return to more authentic constructions and colors, you know, more vintage driven uh, development since high stretch is becoming less, less important. So I think for all of us, we, we like, you know, uh, we've been in this business for, you know, 25, 30 years. So we, we like to look at the, uh, uh, the, the archives that we have and look at beautiful colors that we've done in the past. So for me, it's definitely, uh, this trend is really, um, is really exciting. Maurizio. Uh, uh, I think the most exciting fabric uh, we developed in the last uh, weeks, uh, it's a jacquard fabric. That's really exciting. Uh, all the rest is, uh, let's say, an evolution evolution of uh, the past. Um, another thing that uh, is very interesting uh, is uh, color developments. We develop uh, sustainable uh, new denim shades that are visually different. So uh, in the shops and for our customer, it will be easy to understand that uh, this is another color. These are the most uh, interesting things, I think. Thank you. Ahmed? And there's definitely one thing is a vintage inspiration, but vintage inspiration is always on, in blood of denim. So it's uh, sometimes it's a little bit less, but this time of the time is very, very intensive. Still it's continue, but it's not enough just itself because I think the, the all the denim brands and also the, all the consumers will ask another dimension for the moment, but the real, real, a proof dimension, which has maybe the sustainability. We, we, having, we have to have a, another story because we have to give, provide the fabric and the new collection, new fabrics, as well as we have to add some other things in behind of this because everybody wants to believe, wants to have the trust. And that's why we have to give them this gene, this denim fabric is produced in a different way. And there is another dimension 
which is hidden dimension, but we have to provide them different than this. So I think the sustainability or the, the how effective by be affecting the mother nature is making very big, big concern, especially after this virus thing. I think people will be really concerned about this and people start to thinking, uh, start over again. And I believe instead of making and talking about the sustainability, I think we have to act. And for the new, new fabric collections, the, the, we have to add another dimension and we have to explain this dimension to every consumer. And I think this will be a very new, and uh, not a new, but this will be a very, very important part of the new season. Thank you. Okay, last, last thing I'm gonna ask you is one more thing, one more last thing. Um, if you have to put a number, what do you think the probability is that we're gonna have kingpins in October in Amsterdam? <laughs> Personal feelings? Yes. I think we will be there. This is my personal feeling. Okay. I'm quite okay. I think so. Why not? Uh, in in October, uh, in, we will uh, reopen the school uh, probably in September. The industry will reopen soon. It will be. It will be. I mean, we will be probably wear masks, but uh, we will be there. Okay. Bart. Uh, I think, yes, the probability uh, of being at Kingpins in October is definitely, uh, I would say it's close to 100%. Yes. Wow, wow. If the Dutch will have um, New Yorkers come to visit, I don't think everybody right. wants us right now. I think, I think um, it was funny because when all this started, everybody looked at the Chinese people on a plane and were like, whoa. Now everybody says, no New Yorkers, please. <laughs> it's quite funny. Anyway, even states in America, they say, oh, if you come here from, um, from um, if you come to Texas from New York, we want you to put you in a, in a home for two weeks. <laughs> we don't want you to enter so easily. Thank you. Thank you, all three of you. I really, really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, Andrew. Thank, thank you. you very much, Andrew.